Hey everybody and how are you doing? Today I'm talking about track types in Reaper. I also did this video on Ardour and Studio One already. If you haven't checked them out yet, check them out in the I icon. Let's go with Reaper. Reaper works differently. In Reaper, a track is a track. It doesn't matter what you do with it. And that makes things easy and complicated at the same time. Why is my MacBook making so much noise? Shut up! So, let me explain how this works. First of all, if you want to do anything in Reaper, you have to make a new track. And you can do this in a few different ways. You can do this, of course, via the menu, via track, insert new track, like that. But we don't all have time to click on all those things, so we use our keyboard. And we can use Command plus T for adding a new track. Very logical. In Windows it should be Control plus T. An even quicker way is clicking with the left mouse button, so your normal mouse button, in the gray area over here, and you gotta double click it. Yeah, there it is. This also works in the mixer window, like that. So now we do have a bunch of tracks, but what can we do with it? Well, literally everything. The type of a track is being determined by the thing that's in there. This can be a MIDI clip, but this can also be an audio region. I think it's called an item in Reaper. So, if I drop mono audio in a track, the track will behave as a mono track. If I drop stereo audio in a track, the track will behave as a stereo track. If I drop MIDI in a track, a track will behave as a MIDI track. Pretty simple. If we don't have audio in the tracks, it will be determined by the input. So we can say that we only want to record an analog a mono input, we can choose stereo inputs, and we can also choose a MIDI input, which makes it a MIDI channel. Even more cool than that is that we can also combine things. So I can drop a stereo thing on here, I've got a mono kick on here, and I can even drop MIDI on here. And what I did, I've inserted uh, the Fab Filter 1 synthesizer thingy, uh, to show you this, I'm not a talent at MIDI, so... Okay, it should now first play a MIDI clip, then a stereo audio track, and then a mono kick. The thing I like about this is that mono and stereo tracks are compatible with each other because in Pro Tools if you want to have a mono clip on a stereo track it doesn't want to do that and nah, this is way easier. Then aux channels or buses or stuff. Reaper doesn't know about buses. You don't have like a bus 1 to 128 to route audio to and to catch it out somewhere else. You can only send it to another track. So we can click on the little root button on the left and we can add a new send and we are sending this to channel 3. So let's drag this down a bit. All right. We can also do it the other way around. So let's click on channel 4. Let's click the root button and add a receive and receive everything from channel 2. So these are two ways to make a aux or a bus. There is another very cool way to do the same thing. And this is actually told by one of my patrons over at patreon.com. Go check out Patreon, it's amazing. And that is dragging and dropping. So I can drag the root button from here. It will become a little jack. It's a, actually a stereo jack or a balanced jack. So, so we don't have interference. Drop it on the root of a different channel. And we made a send to the third channel. So everything I'm playing in here should be played back in the other three channels. So can an aux channel also be an audio channel at the same time? Yes it can, let me show you. So it's receiving audio from this clip. And now it's just playing back audio from a different one. I'm not advising you to go crazy with this stuff because if you do, your sessions will get really messy and difficult to understand. So in one way, Having just a track to do everything is very handy. On the other hand, you can also go too crazy with it and get very messy with it. So if you're going further with Reaper, you have to find a way to discern tracks from each other. So one way I found to discern tracks from each other is by uh, changing the fader color. You can do this on the track layout uh, mixer panel and selecting a different uh, color fader or a different preset for a track. Uh, so let's say blue. And as you can see now, my 
newly made arc channels have a blue fader so that's how you can discern things from each other. I'm sure there are other ways, but that's something for a different video. If you know something for that video, drop it in the comments below because I'm also learning. That's the reason why I'm making these videos. So that being said, I wanna end this video over here. If you liked it and learned something from this video, please let me know by giving me a thumbs up. If you hated it, then you know what to do and hit that thumbs down button because you like to do it. If you have made it till here, consider supporting me on Patreon. Would mean a lot if you do. You can check out my Patreon campaign over here. Also consider checking out other videos of me over here. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I will see you guys in a new video tomorrow. And for now, I wanna say bye bye.